My name is Bob Akbar Kohana. I am a fellowship trained spinal surgeon at the Southern California Orthopedic Institute. I specialize in surgical and non-surgical treatments of spinal disorders involving the neck and the back. In this video, I will be discussing common conditions of the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine consists of five lumbar bones called vertebral bodies. These are labeled L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and one sacral bone which is labeled S1. In between each of these bones is a disc which acts as a shock absorber. The disc is similar to a jelly donut in that there is a harder outer layer and a softer jelly center. The spinal nerves lie directly behind this bone disc complex. There are a spectrum of conditions associated with the lumbar spine, including sprains and strains, arthritis, disc disease and degeneration, disc herniations, spinal stenosis, fractures and tumors. As there are a spectrum of conditions, there are a spectrum of symptoms. Patients may experience muscle aches and spasms, stiffness, clicking and popping sensations, and pain. Pain may be in the low back or in the buttock muscles. There may be pain radiating into the legs, and there may be associated numbness and tingling or loss of strength or coordination. I recommend that a patient should be seen by a physician if their pain lasts for more than seven to 10 days despite conservative measures, which include ice and heat, stretching, rest, and anti-inflammatory medications. But I welcome patients to come in to see me for a consultation whenever they have concerns or questions about their condition. However, if weakness or loss of coordination develops, I recommend a consultation sooner. Fortunately, most lumbar conditions may be treated without surgery. Treatment is tailored to the cause of the symptoms and may include rest, avoiding painful activities, stretching, heat, ice, medications such as anti-inflammatory medications, pain medications, or anti-spasm medications, physical therapy, acupuncture, chiropractic care, and steroid injections. Surgery is recommended when a patient develops a loss of neurological function, such as weakness, or the pain becomes intolerable despite conservative measures. The goal of surgery is to decrease pain and restore function to allow people to return to their normal daily activities. I employ the least invasive surgical approaches to achieve this goal. Often, patients may go home within a few hours of the surgery, but more complex cases may require a few days in the hospital. Even with these complex procedures, minimally invasive techniques are utilized and patients are out of bed within a few hours of the surgery. Lumbar surgeries include lumbar decompression and microdiscectomy, lumbar fusion, and lumbar disc replacements. The surgical approach depends on the condition and the patient's lifestyle. For example, a patient may experience radiating leg pain, also known as sciatica. This is due to pressure on the spinal nerves from conditions such as disc herniations or spinal stenosis. In this instance, a small incision is made on the back and the nerves are decompressed, thereby relieving the pressure on the nerves and alleviating the pain. Often, patients feel relief within a few hours of the surgery. This is just one of the many advanced, minimally invasive surgeries performed at the Southern California Orthopedic Institute. Once it has been decided to proceed with surgery, the patient will need a preoperative medical clearance, including blood work, EKG, and chest x-ray. Certain medications will need to be discontinued one week prior to the surgery, including vitamins, fish oils, blood thinners, and anti-inflammatory medications. The patient will not be allowed to eat or drink anything after midnight the night before the surgery. A few days prior to the surgery, the patient will come in for an office visit, at which time I will go over all the details of the surgery and what to expect after the surgery. This is an opportunity to have all your questions answered. After surgery, I recommend that the patient ambulate three to four times per day, five to 10 minute walks, either in the house or in the neighborhood. Walks could be longer and more frequent if tolerated. The patient may shower 48 hours after the surgery the incision may get wet with soap and water, but do not rub the incision or soak in a bathtub. 10 to 14 days after the surgery, the patient will be scheduled for a follow-up visit, at which time physical therapy will be prescribed. Depending on the surgery, the patient may be on BLT restrictions, which include no bending, lifting, or twisting. Periodic follow-ups will be arranged every six weeks. To protect your spine, I recommend maintaining good flexibility and core strength. Stay fit and keep the weight down as much as possible, as excess weight will deteriorate the discs in the spine. It has also been shown that smoking causes degeneration of the spinal discs. 
I recommend proper body mechanics and lifting techniques. To learn more about lumbar conditions and treatment, please visit SCOI.com.